Hey guys, what is up? Steven here, gonna do another film breakdown today. Uh, and today I'm going to be doing one on Jared Cook, the new tight end for the Chargers. Um, you know, I, I was somewhat on the on the fence uh, of in terms of like how excited I was or whatever um, when the Chargers signed him, but I do think it's gonna be a good signing. We'll give the Chargers a lot of options in terms of pass cat in terms of pass catching versatility. I think that's the name of the game with Jared Cook. Um, he's not the same player he once was. But I still, I do believe that he still has some juice left. I think that the Chargers will be able to get a lot out of him uh, and be able to move him around from an inline tight end out wide in the slot. Um, for the Saints, he did take most of his uh, snaps from the slot. Um, that's kind of where they preferred to have him. But I think they'll be the Chargers will be able to move him around a little bit more because of Justin Herbert's arm strength and and really the versatility in the pass game. So you know the, the things to like, and I'll get into this with Jared Cook. Um, first and foremost is his athleticism. I think he, like I said, he still has some juice left. He's able to shake people. He's able to separate really well. Uh, I think he's a little bit of a separator and route runner than Hunter Henry is. Uh, and I think he could do a little more things, you know, vertically. I think that's the biggest difference between the two, uh, in terms of receiving ability is Jared Cook's ability to get over the top and stretch the field and respect uh, and get defenses to respect his ability. Um, that being said, there are basically no reps of him blocking. He's not a blocking tight end. Um, you know, if you look at his snap counts, it's only about 40 to 50% of the snaps because they would bring in Josh Hill and even Taysom Hill uh, to do a lot of the blocking stuff. So Jared Cook's not a blocker uh, and they will be able to, they will have to address that at some point, but there's a lot to like in terms of his receiving ability. Uh, and I will get into that in this film breakdown right now. All right, so first and foremost with uh, Jared Cook, like I mentioned, his his receiving ability is just a little bit greater than what the Chargers have had in the past, a little more versatile. Uh, and he's going to line up in the slot here to the right. That's Elvin Kamara motioning right now. Uh, and then there's going to be a trip to the bottom. So they'll isolate Jared Cook here. You know, that is where the play is designed to go. Uh, this was in the uh, NFC wildcard game against the Bears. So uh, I wanted to start with the playoff games. Wasn't a two, wasn't, too much action for Jared Cook against the Buccaneers. Uh, unfortunately for him, the Buccaneers kind of just dominated that game. So uh, here we go in the slot to on the top of the screen. So like I said with Jared Cook, his athleticism allows him to break some tackles. And really that's like, you know, something we didn't really see a whole lot of with Hunter Henry. And so, you know, Jared Cook, he still has that burst. He still has that ability to separate. He's not the cleanest route runner, as you can see, a little um, unorthodox here, but he's able to isolate against the linebacker, get open and do his job, make a nice catch, and then break one tackle. And his athleticism allows him to get five yards after the catch as well. And those yards add up, man, when you're not having any kind of yards after the catch ability, which is what essentially the Chargers had in Hunter Henry. You know, these kinds of plays where, you get five, six yards after the catch. Those add up and they help your offense move the ball on a high level. All right, next one here. He's going to be in the bottom slot this time. And this is where you'll see him, again, kind of separate, stretch the field, and be able to get yards after the catch. So just kind of going back here, you know, gets a nice slant up against this linebacker and, and separates well. Maybe a little push off, but that's okay. Didn't call it. And when he catches this, ball right he's at the right at the 15 yard line uh and then he ends up getting tackled right at the at the nine yard line so that's five yards after the catch again those those plays add up right and so you get first and goal of the nine instead of first and goal of the 10 so just, it's a little thing but you know it, those things add up and it's a really good play by him to get open in isolation against the linebacker and this is another thing like you know with him not having to run all of his slots or all of his um routes from the inline you can put them out in the slot and create more space for your offense you know you have one-on-one -on -one at the top if you want to go there you also have a one-on-one -on -one at the bottom I think that's Taysom Hill but you know when you have players like Keenan Allen and Mike Williams the isolation of Jared Cook allows you to get one-on-one -on -one opportunities on the outside as well on the inside so uh <clears throat> I like the versatility there uh from Jared Cook All right, next, uh, I did mention his ability to stretch the stretch the field 
vertically. Like I think that is the biggest difference. So he actually is going to line up um, in line right here, right by the 20. Uh, and so it's a bit of a numbers game, right? You have the linebacker, the safety in the corner, and then you have Jared Cook and Ty Montgomery uh, up top who had motioned out of the backfield. So this is all about isolation and matchups and about Jared Cook, you know, reading the offense and finding or reading the defense, excuse me, and finding the open zone, which is clearly right here in the middle of the end zone. And so he does a really good job of identifying that open field. Uh, and then, you know, his speed vertically puts this cornerback in a bit of a tough situation. And it puts all three of these guys, you know, you see kind of this parallelogram right here, if you will. Uh, and because of Jared Cook's speed and on the outside and uh, from the slot, excuse me, you know, it allows the, the Saints to identify a mismatch, identify an open hole in the zone, uh, and then score a touchdown. So just a little more versatile than what we've seen out of Hunter Henry. So here he's basically right out of the end line, except he's in a two-point stance. And this is where you'll see him stretch the field vertically, as well as offer some yards after the catch. Again, you know, those four, five, six yards really start to add up. And so we saw a very similar play that the Saints ran against the Chargers uh, and Jaron Cook was able to take this for a touchdown. And so I think, you know, he's kind of able to take this, uh, stop this route at the top of the route tree right here, but he's wide open in the middle of the field. And, you know, Drew Brees, this gives him flexibility because he can lead him to the left and he can maybe get some yards after the catch. And he can see where this safety is coming from. I think that's Harrison Smith. Uh, and it gives Drew Brees a lot of options as a tight, as a quarterback, excuse me. And again, you see the yards after the catch. So here again, motioning to the slot right there. You'll see him stretch the field vertically in this kind of instance. And, you know, I think if this is Justin Herbert, you know, this might end up being, you know, a bigger play. So Drew Brees... He doesn't get the ball out early, but because he's Drew Brees and his arm is kind of dead at this point, he's not able to lead Jared Cook. But again, you see him really open in a zone, being able to stretch the field uh, and get a big play for his offense. I, I tweeted this play out earlier. To me, this is kind of the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? This is the main difference between Hunter Henry and Jared Cook is you'll see Jared Cook isolate against a linebacker and go vertically down the field and make a big play for his offense. We didn't really see a whole lot of Hunter Henry doing these kind of things. Most of his stuff was short and intermediate routes. And so having this kind of speed and athleticism at the tight end spot, you know, it's going to give the Chargers a lot of options to be able to put him out wide and seek out mismatches. You know, if they stick, <clears throat> excuse me, if they keep a, a slot corner on him, then, you know, there's other mismatches in other places. And so, you know, the ability to have Jared Cook on the field and force opposing defenses to play a little more nickel or dime package than they would like, I think is, is a big advantage for the Chargers. Really good job of separation there as well by Jared Cook. All right, so this is from Taysom Hill. Uh, the Taysom Hill games were not pretty. It was not fun to watch these games. Um, but I did want to see how if he was used differently with Taysom Hill because Taysom Hill does have a little bit of a stronger arm uh, than Drew Brees. And so this is a, another example of where you'll see uh, Jared Cook's ability to get yards after the catch. So this is a little, you know, this is kind of this is a very similar play to what they would run with Drew Brees, right? you know, short out, four or five yard out. And he's able to catch this pass off of an inaccurate pass from Taysom Hill. And it kind of looks like they're setting up a screen for Jared Cook and he's able to get that first down. You see the third down signal here. So he catches it and he gets five, six yards after the catch. Really kind of his calling card at this point in his career. All right, last play. This one really stood out to me because you're able to seek out a mismatch, put Jared Cook out wide against a cornerback instead of, you know, a linebacker or a safety. And this really gives you options because if you can put Jared Cook out wide and have him be enough of a threat where the cornerback stays out wide instead of switching with the slot corner or bringing a safety over, you know, obviously that gives the Chargers option. The play does go to Jared Cook right here. But, you know, in this kind of, kind of instance, you could have Keenan Allen and Tyron Johnson right here 
And if Jared Cook isn't able to win, then one of these two has a big mismatch against a linebacker or a safety. Uh, in this case, you know, you have the slot corner and then the safety helping and linebacker helping. So Jared Cook's ability and his reputation as a pass catcher should open up a lot of windows uh, for mismatches uh, for the Chargers going forward. And Joe Lombardi and Frank Smith will know how to use him. So he's able to win in space against a cornerback. Like that's a really tough route. That's a really good route for a wide receiver, right? Like this is not an easy, you know, pitch and catch kind of play. He has to be able to really sell that he's going outside. And he does that with a big step out wide, comes back over the middle, really nuanced, really athletic. And so I think the Chargers are, are, in, uh, are in good hands with Jared Cook at the position. So we'll have to see. I do think that I'll have to add a blocker, like I said, on the show. Um, but that'll do it for this breakdown, you guys. Hopefully you're able to uh, learn a little bit about Jared Cook and get a little more excited. I know I did when I returned on the film uh, about the possibilities that they have with Jared Cook going forward. All right, thanks.